we are going to be playing today with the A Little Latte, which is a brand new set, online exclusive. So we are going to be working with Early Espresso. And the paper that I have chosen is the one that has the splats on the back and or has the Lost Lagoon on it. Now, all of my measurements um, for making this card, you'll be able to find on my blog, which is www.designwithjoe.ca. And then I have a different piece of the paper here. I have the one with the coffee rings, or this one, by the time you cut it out, um, you, don't, you lose a little bit here. So I think we're gonna use the coffee rings for sure and some Lost Lagoon. So we're going with some different color choices here. I am gonna go ahead and do some stamping. We're gonna stamp this coffee cup here with our, we're just gonna put that onto a piece of um, thick basic white. And I think maybe we are going to, I think we're gonna use this one that I really quite like. And this is the Hello There, Let's Catch Up. And if you don't have a long uh, block, Here's how you can use this. So just put it on a diagonal and it will work really well. So if you only have a block this size and you're using it for something, go ahead and do that. And uh, I've already done the spoon, so we will leave that spoon, but we need the top of our cup, which is right here. I should just pull this all the way off. We need that guy here, which we're also, oops, also gonna do on a diagonal. Okay, so that's a good start. Let's go ahead and use our inks. So I'm going to use early espresso to make our cup. So let's go ahead and stamp that. So I'm just gonna stamp it straight down. Give it a really firm press there. Now we're going to give it a little bit of color here. I think we're gonna go for some copper clay, a little bit different for the uh, coffee that's in it. So when you have the cup just like this, it doesn't necessarily look like you've got much going on there, but as soon as you put this on, look how it makes a difference. So I'm gonna try not to get my head in there, but look how immediately that gives you a better uh, coffee cup. Now, it looks like I wasn't completely 100% on there, but I think it's gonna work. And let's go ahead and color our cup. We are going to color with our Lost Lagoon. I do have some pretty peacock as well. And we're gonna go ahead and use our dark Lost Lagoon first. Okay, so there's a lot of lines on here already that you can just copy. Use the lines that the Stampin' Up! artists have given you. So I'm using my dark. And I'm gonna go in with my light, which is gonna, it's quite, there's quite a difference actually between the light and the dark Lost Lagoon. So when you are deciding if there's an ink color, so normally we use Memento Black when we are using our Stampin' Blends, but you don't have to all the time. You can use different colors, but you wanna just, check and see that the color is not going to blend out too much so that the ink color is not going to blend out. So because we have a big area, I'm going to use the brush tip. I often don't use the brush tip because it's so delicate, but you can see as well, look at the difference in the color. So you might find on your own Stampin' Blends, the difference in the color between the uh, bullet tip, which is this light area, and same marker, but the brush tip is a lot darker. So if you have that happen on your own blends, don't worry about it. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the blends. It just means that you've got a little bit more pigment in one side versus the other. So I'm just going to come in from the sides here. I'm gonna to color to the side. Now, one thing you might wanna think about doing with your blends is leaving a little bit of plain color sort of in this kind of area here. So I'm not going to color everywhere. I'm just going to use my uh, small little brush marks, we're going to call them. Okay, and then I'm going to come in, just pull those over. I'm going to leave that a little bit blank and I'm going to come in with my light again. 
and I'm going to color that over top. So what that's going to do is it is going to create a lighter look like the light is just hitting the cup. So it gives you some added dimension. I have a lot more alcohol in my bullet tip than I do in my brush tip. Okay, so there's our cup. Okay, so we've got some dimension going on right here. We are also going to stamp some words. I'm going to stamp words with my early espresso here, and you can see what a great one this is. I just love the, the writing on this one. Okay, so hello there, let's catch up. Okay, that's early espresso on top of uh, crumb cake. Now I'm going to run this through my uh, mini cut and emboss machine, and we need our die. Now you could always stamp this part separately and cut it out as well and run that through. So as most of you know, I just use some masking tape. I've used different things. I also will use post-it note tape, washi tape, but I like this because I can use it over and over again and there really is not much um, cost involved in that. But you'll also see me use the um, um, post-it note tape too. Okay, so we're going to run this through. Worked better than it did a couple weeks ago. And then you have your cool coffee cup. So we're going to cut out this guy right here with my paper snips. And first I'm just going to go right around there really quickly. And then I'm just going to cut it out. Now when I'm fussy cutting, which is what this is, I tend to leave a little river of color. I don't go right up to the edge. Now people have uh, differing opinions on this. So you might like to go right up to the edge. I find that when I have that little river of color here, it's got pecan pie behind it. But if it were white, I just think it makes the image look a little bit larger. So uh, what's, your, what's your experience there? Okay, so now we've got two coffee cups and I'm just going to leave this because I think I want to cut this off and maybe turn it into a banner, but I'm going to wait until we are done. So let's go ahead and make the rest of the card. Okay, so I've got my pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down right now. And again, measurements are going to be on my blog tomorrow. Okay, so that's going to go right on top of our Lost Lagoon and be centered. I'm going to put a score line, two score lines actually, on here with our paper trimmer. And our score lines are going to be at five and a half and nine. So I'm going to pull out my arm so that I can get to my nine inch. And I'm going to go five and a half. Now you always want to make sure that your cardstock is right up against this lip. There's lots of uh, clearance there. It's about an, an eighth of an inch thick. So five and a half and all the way out to nine. And then we're done with our trimmer. And we're going to fold it in the middle. And you want to line that up as much as possible. And then we're going to, I'm going to use a different bone folder here. And then we're also going to fold it so that this piece here folds into the middle. Okay, so both of them are going to fold into the middle. And then you're going to open it back up again. We're going to take our paper. Again, we want this to go down. And if you notice, see how if I put this down right now, it's not lining up with that. So turn it around because I did cut this out of one piece of paper. So then it is a just a seamless movement from one to the other. Now what we're going to do with this is we are going to fold it back like this. So we are going to take this and we are going to punch it out. Now I'm going to go this way with mine and I'm going to try and get the same amount of space on either side and have it be sort of as much as possible in the middle. And all we're doing here is creating a little 
uh, spot where our fingers can get in and pull something out. Now we're going to take a little bit of that liquid glue again and we are just going to give ourselves a very narrow, very close to the edge, little bit of glue and just fold that back on itself. This is a super quick way that you can make a gift card holder or put something else in it, which is what we're going to do today. And I'm going to take my piece of white, which is right here. Piece of white is going to go straight down like this. Again, we're going to use our liquid glue to put that down. And then lay that down. And we're going to put our coffee rings down here. Okay, so this is another layout that you can change up with a bunch of different papers, whatever you like. I love the theme of this one being the coffee. Okay, so we've got our match here. Let me get that straightened out a little bit with my liquid glue. Tiny bit of room to move. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to put our coffee cups. Now we could just put them on the front like this and our words. Our words are gonna go and match here. But I thought what I would do is I would cut out some circles. So I've cut out some different colors. I have large circles and I have smaller circles. And these are cut with the, you probably already know because I've used them lots, the everyday details dies. I have cut out some of these circles. So we're going to go with the dark with the Lost Lagoon on top. So of I'm it. gonna go ahead and glue these guys together first. And then we're going to put this on with our dimensionals. Now with the dimensionals here, I want it to be sort of close to the middle of the card. So I'm gonna put my dimensionals here and then I'm going to put some on this part. So back over here. So I'm gonna put some here. And why I do it two ways like this is I don't want my dimensionals to be stuck over here where you're going to be able to see them. So if I had this here, when you open it up, you're going to be able to see the dimensional. Don't want to see the, the dimensionals. So let's take that off. Take these off. And let's put that on here. Sort of in the middle, but it doesn't need to be exactly in the middle. And now we are going to, I'm going to cut this out with my trimmer, which is buried right now. So let's go ahead and cut out this piece with our trimmer. I'm going to turn it, so when I've already stamped something, it's pretty straight here, then I usually cut it out with the words on that side. So I cut it out, I can see that my cutting line is right here, so I'm too close right now to the top. So I'm going to go down to the one inch, put it right up against the top, hold it in place, and then cut. So then I have a pretty straight piece. Okay, so I'm actually going to trim this down just a tiny little bit. One inch is a little too wide. So I'm going to cut it so that I'm going to cut with the words on this side. So I'm going to cut it so that I can see that again that my line is right here. I want this to be as straight as possible. And now I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so sometimes you just have to hold your mouth exactly the right way and hope for the best, but usually you can get this to work. I'm gonna turn this into a flag, which I think most people know. We did this just the last week, I think. So in the middle, from each edge, right to where you ended the cut. And same with this side right here. Okay, so you get a perfect flag there. Now, there's a couple other things in this collection. There are some dots and there is some ribbon. Now this ribbon is sort of a little furry, so it's got some little um, fibers coming off of it. It's actually called polka dot trim and it's a little bit heavier. So it's, uh, it's flat for sure but it's a little heavier, a little bit stiffer. So I've found that it's best if you just take this, cut it off, 
and we're going to put it on with some glue dots. It seems to hold it the best. And then the other thing that we're going to put on are these adhesive back swirl dots. And I'm hoping that you can see that there's little bits of a darker color or different color brown in the dots themselves. So they actually have some texture built right into the dots. So we are going to use those as well. We are going to take this piece and have it just come off the outside of the edge. And I think I'm going to put it on with my glue dots back here using my take your pick. So my glue dot is going to come off. Well, it doesn't have to. I can do this. I can go right on top here and I'm going to do another one too, right over top, lift it off. And then I'm going to go straight out the edge, straight out. And I'm going to trim that off with my good scissors again. And I'm just going to go like that. Okay, so just a little bit of interest. We are going to put that, I think just up there, on the diagonal with some dimensionals. So we are going to have a lot of different texture on this card. And I'm just going to, just going to overlap that a little bit, I think. So the dimensionals are going to do two things here. They're going to pop up the words themselves, but it's also going to hold this trim in place in addition to the glue dot. Okay, so we are going to put that up here. And then we are going to glue down this guy. And we're going to use dimensionals on the other one. So... It is so much fun to play with these. Um, have them go a little bit outside the edge. It gives you just a little bit more um, interest to your card if they don't go right to right in line with the circle. I think I need one more there. And take those off. Now so we're gonna go ahead and give that spoon here. And we're going to put that one on with a mini dimensional on the spoon part itself. So right there. And then we're going to have some liquid glue on this part of the spoon. And the reason for that is that this is two levels. So this is a little higher than that part. So the dimensional is going to have them be the same height by the time we're done. Now. Don't want to get that glue all over myself. And this is going to sit and glue. And this is going to go over top. Super cute. There's why I really like the spoon. So this is just out of the Baker's Twine Essentials pack. Take your pick tool. So same thing as what we did last week. Make just a little, uh, roll that over in your hand. And then we're going to put that right onto the spoon itself. And then I'm going to put our little guy right over top. And I think I'm going to leave that long for now anyway. And we have our little spots here. I think we only need one. And I think I'm going to go for the lighter one here, which is going to be sort of a similar kind of color to this guy. And I'm just going to put it up there. You don't need a lot, I don't think, for this one. Now, what are we going to put inside there? Well, we could put a gift card. It'll fit in there perfectly. And look, with those colors, it's going to match um, very similar anyway to Starbucks. But I picked up some of these via Instant, which is a little pack of coffee. And they will fit right inside here. Now, we'll make it a little bit fat. Not fat. Oh, my glue didn't go all the way. It will make it a little bit fatter, but it'll still fit. You'll have to put extra postage on it, but if you hand deliver it, it's perfect. Thanks very much for joining me. Please like the video and subscribe if you'd like to. Also join my email list where you can get exclusive ideas from me every week. Thanks very much. Have a great paper crafting day.